Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new PDCGO video, and uh, yeah, we still have some decks to look at from Guardians Rising, and today guys, we're going to be taking a look at a Victory Bell deck. Victory Bell is one of the new Stage 2 Grass Pokemon, like we didn't already have enough of those, in Guardians Rising. Now, Victory Bell obviously is not on the same level as Decidueye, but you know what, it's still a fairly interesting card, I would say that it's halfway decent. Um, we'll take a look at its attacks here. Its first attack is mainly what we're going to try and base this deck around. For 1 energy, you do 20 damage, and then your opponent's active Pokemon is now burned, confused, and poisoned, which is pretty crazy. You're putting, like, 3 special conditions on your opponent, um, which is a lot, and that, that does make Pollen Hazard a, a pretty unique attack to do. Um, it's good. However, it's not very stable when you consider Switch, Escape Rope, Floatstone, Zoark, Olympia, Center Lady, and just simply retreating. It kind of makes Victory Bell a little less good, I feel like. Um, so we're going to use it with Vileplume. Vileplume is really the best partner I could find. I looked into, like, Lorantis promo. I looked into Decidueye. I looked even into Garbodor, or Garbotoxin, but I found that uh, Vileplume was the best partner because just locking items makes it even worse. So I feel like Victory Bell Vileplume is the way to go to make Victory Bell work. So we're going to be using a Victory Bell Vileplume deck today. Um, so ideally, you want to use Pollen Hazard, and then you want to use Stick and Absorb. This is kind of the other attack because you can't really win a game with Pollen Hazard. You're only technically doing maybe like 50, 60 damage a turn. Um, for one energy, so with Stick and Absorb, you can at least do 80, heal 20 from his Pokemon, and then they can't retreat, so then this way they can't get out of the Pollen Hazard lock, so it just makes it even worse for your opponent to uh, try and get out of this lock, so it's kind of how this deck operates, you Pollen Hazard them, Vileplume should be in play, and then you use Stick and Absorb. The nice thing about Victory Bell too, you don't have to use Rare Candy, you can just quite simply use Forest of Giant Plants, it immediately gets Victory Bell into play, you know, that broken Vine Space, boys gets your victory belt into play a lot easier and uh, makes it nicer stick and absorb also just a grass and a dce means you can use dce in your deck um which is pretty good kind of just treat it like decidueye with stick and absorb um, like razor leaf now we do play a 1-1 glissopod line in this deck too um i didn't really know what else to put in i had two spots left i was thinking a second revitalizer wouldn't be bad um maybe you could run two revitalizers don't know what you would take out but I was thinking we might want to add another um, attacker, and so I was like, eh, we should probably add something that can at least do a lot of damage. So I just threw in Galissapod. Galissapod could be decent with Resolute Claws. You know, in the late game, you never know when you could take, like, a big knockout on something. I feel like having a big attacker in this deck is important since, again, the damage output can sometimes be very low. If your opponent can find a way to get out of the Pollen Hazard, Victory Bell is kind of useless. So at least with Galissapod, we have some kind of backup attacker. Same thing with Tapu Lele. We do have Energy Drive if we need it. I guess you want to go that route. We only do play the one Tapu Lele. Mainly, you are going to be using Shaman for the draw support because you do want to try and draw into your Victory Bell. Try and get a Victory Bell out on your first turn. Try and get a Vile Plume out on your first or second turn. So Shaman will help us with that. So we do play two Shamans over playing two Tapu Leles. But we do play one Lele because Lele is just too good. So those are all the Pokemon. We do play a 3-3 Victory Bell line. A 4-4 might be better, but again, that's a little too clunky. So we are just going to go 3-3 Victory Bell here. Um, you can look at... Weeping Bell, which can be kind of disruptive with Muddy Acid. Um, so there you go. That's um, the Pokemon lineup for Victory Bell. We do play a 2-2 Vile Plume line uh, for that item lock, Irritating Pollen. And we do play the 1-1 Glissapod line, just so we have a nice backup attacker. Um, so those are all of our Pokemon. We can look into the trainers and supporters. The big ones, we got, we got Field Blower. Now, Field Blower may be weird to see because it's like, why would you run Field Blower when you play Vileplume? However, if your opponent manages to get a Garbotoxin off on you while your Vileplume's in play, at least this way you can get rid of their tool card and then keep the item lock in play. You know what I mean? So that's why we do play Field Blower within the deck. Uh, we do play two level balls since you can search out Bellsprout. Weeping Bell, Oddish, and Gloom. Three level balls might be better. Um, I just couldn't find a root. We do play one Revitalizer since everything is grass. Two Revitalizers is honestly better. I just don't know what you could take out for that. Like, what what really is there to remove for the two Revitalizers? Three Trainer's Mail since um, it's important to grab your four giant plants with that. Four Ultra Balls to search out your deck for stuff you need, like your Pokemon. Four four giant plants. This is obviously the engine of the deck. So the only way we're going to be able to get the Victory Bell going is with four giant plants. 
to Lysaders. Um, we don't play Via Seeker in this deck, so we are going to max out on Sycamores and uh, Ends. And we do play two Lysanders in the deck to Sprinks the Foe. We do have our Ends. We got four of them. I went with four over three. Because, again, when the item lock gets in play, you can't play any items. And uh, we don't play a single copy of Verse Seeker in the deck, so End can help us there. Um, so I like having the four Ends, just so that we always will have an End. Plus, you never know. You could end your opponent into, like, a handful of items. Uh, one Olympia, just so we have that free retreat. Um, sometimes you won't always get the Floatstone on your plumes. Four Sycamores for draw support. We do play three Floatstones. I love playing three copies of Floatstones as opposed to two in my Vile Plume decks. A lot of people just straight up go for two Floatstones. Um, but three might be better, and I like having three, so we are going to play three Floatstones in this deck. We don't need Choice Band, since you're never really going to get one into play. Um, unless, like, you can get the Choice Band down before Plume. But that is not very easy to do unless you played, like, four Choice Bands. So we do play three Floatstones. Um, four DCEs so that we can attack with our Victory Bell, Stick, and Absorb. And we do play seven Grass. We don't play any way to get energy back. So I like having a bit more energy. Like, you could go six energy. I'm just going to go with seven because I like having the extra energy in the deck just in case. Though, six Grass energies might be a little more efficient. I like having the seven in the deck. I feel like it's a little more efficient to have seven energy. This is my Victory Bell Vile Plume list. Don't know if it's perfect. I do think more different cards could be added, like more Revitalizer. I think two Revitalizers is better. But again, the more items you put in the deck, one, the worst garbage or situations you'll be in, and two, the more items that you just don't want to have sitting in your hand. There you go. Um, so yeah, this is my Victory Bell Viral Plume list. I think it's pretty decent. Pop into some matches with the deck, see an action on PC Joe, and see how fun the disruption can be. Alright guys, let's go find a uh, match or two with the deck. We'll see how it goes. We're probably going to get some long games. We might get some short games too. We'll have to find out how it goes. Uh, so we'll go for the coin flip here. I'm going to go heads, Toad Dial. Don't let me down. You let me down, Toad Dial. You, you jerk. No, nah, it's fine. It, it's better to honestly go second with the deck because you can uh, get the turn one uh, victory belt off if you're lucky. Uh, so we'll go for a mulligan. It looks like I'm against a Gardevoir deck. Could be Sylveon too. I'm fine with Sylveon because we can kind of just confuse them. Plus we shut down items. You can't play hammers. Uh, but judging from our draws here, it's not looking too good. Okay, well, I like you too, game. Thank thanks for giving me a good hand. Yeah, it looks like we are going to be up against Sylveon. I mean, you never know, it might not actually be Sylveon because, I mean, he doesn't play Fire or Water, so at least we don't have to worry about Flareon hitting me for weakness. If it comes down to the edge, Sylveon, of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah, I can't wait. Man, I hate Sylveon. I, I hate the stall Sylveon decks more than anything else. Like, there's so many creative ways to play Sylveon, but people just play it and make it AIDS. Okay, he puts a parallel down now, which doesn't make any sense. Um, wait, is Sylveon's eyes transparent? Okay, its eyes look kind of transparent from this angle. But I'm uh, not really too enthusiastic this match. You might get some salt out of me because I can't, I can't, uh, I can't stand Sylveon. Uh, we'll grab Bellsprout here. Hopefully these traders' mails end up hitting us. We can even use Galissa Pod if we want to. Maybe take them out. Put down Bellsprout. Ideally, we do want to get a Victory Bell off this turn so that we can. Um, so that we can, we can at least confuse him, because at that point, Sylveon might struggle to even pull off Magical Ribbon. I think I'll just grab Ultra Ball. We'll put down Shaman, I guess, that's fine. I'm not really too, too concerned about going Plume this match anyways, but it'd be good anyways. Uh, I'll grab Shaman here. Uh, so, Revitalizer. Hopefully we get Revitalizer off the Shaman and Force Giant Plants. So let's go with the Shaman here, let's see what we can get. Come on, don't let me down, Shaman. You let me down, of course you did. Alright, I guess we'll get rid of this. I'm going to Sycamore. I'm just going to dump my hand. And go all in. Let's see. What? Dude! Why are we not getting our Forest of Giant Plants? What? Oh my god. Unbelievable. Should I just grab a second Oddish here? Just grab... I think I'll grab a second Oddish. Just in case. Dude, why are we whiffing? Go figure, the one game that I don't want to whiff, we have to whiff. I guess we'll keep Oddish in the active. <sighs> Alright guys, this is a little annoying. At least we can end him out of Magical Ribbon, but... I, I don't know why we whiffed that, that's really annoying. He puts another Parallel down, I don't know why he's wasting this now. He could easily play that down when, uh, you know, we put down the Force Giant Plants, but I'm fine with that. Field Blower, okay. 
I still have the flow in my hand. Kind of regret putting the second artist down, but just in case he DCs. And we see magical ribbon, all right. I swear, man, Sylveon, it, this, deck, this card gives me a headache. All right, so uh, we still have to get our Vitalizer. We're already short two Victory Bells, thanks to our really bad luck here. All right, let's see. I mean, oh my god. I don't understand this game. All right, we're going to end him here. Hopefully, we can find Victory Bell and Force Giant Plants. Because if not, we're going to... Oh, my God. We got the Victory Bell. No Force. We can't even Ultra Ball for Shaman. Because our other Shaman is in the prizes. Go figure. Dude, I give up. I think I'll attach and pass. This is, like... Oh my god. I know we went through two males, but seriously, bro. It's like the one matchup where we don't want to whiff. Like, Victory Bell, why are you doing this to me? You're trolling me. He gets rid of energy, too. That's brutal. Is he going to go for plea? I feel like he's going to do plea here. No fairy wind. Okay. I'm trying not to, like, rage and get really mad here. If I was in recording, I probably would have, I mean, I probably would have conceded by now, but I probably also would have punched a hole in my uh, computer. Okay, yeah. F you too, game. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, lovely, lovely top deck. J yeah, just, just when I needed it. Just when I needed it. Thanks, game. And we can't even end them either, which kind of sucks. Well, actually, he didn't do anything. Okay. the very least... 100% confirmed, we are going to be able to Vile Plume him here. I'm just going to get rid of Lele and Lysander. I don't want to get rid of those energies. Um, but we can finally get Vile Plume off, forcing him to have to do uh, Flare Gun here. So we can Vile Plume him. You know, a little late in the match. We were kind of low on cards too, so that's not really that good. But we can finally do Pollen Hazard here, and we can finally get this lot going, even though it should have happened on our very second turn, but uh, this game doesn't like me. All right, so let's see what we get. Okay, he's not burned anymore. He's still confused, though. I never get lucky with burn. I honestly don't think I've had a single game. And keep in mind, I haven't used burn all that much. Another Eevee. Dang it. Not what I wanted to see. Handiwork again? Oh, no. Okay, he didn't really get rid of that mini card that I didn't even care about anyway, so that's fine. I think I'm just going to load energy on to Victory Bell here. Seems fine. I think we're good, though. Force him to have to uh, flip through attack. Fine with that. You play that down. Now you can't uh, energy evolve. Be my guest. I don't even need force anymore. I think I can just sweep a victory ball. Hey, Tails. All right, maybe, maybe we're in luck here. Maybe we're about to poop on a Sylveon deck. I'm just gonna keep this going on. Let's just stick and absorb him. Cool thing is, I think he dies into my next turn too. Not, not dies, gets knocked out. If only he was still burned though. I never get lucky with my burn flips, man. I swear, every time I burn them, they always get heads. If he was still burned, we would have been great because we would have uh, kept them knocked out. The cool thing is, he can't retreat. Oh, he had it in his hand. Okay, that's fine. Is Sylveon a rabbit? I think it is. Yeah, I think Sylveon's a rabbit. I don't know. Ran random random thoughts today on PC2, but Sylveon looks like a rabbit. I just realized. Delinquent. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. I'm not really losing that many good things other than N. I mean, N's kind of a bit of a loss. It's fine, though. We still... How many N's do we have left? And he gets heads. Go figure. Right when we lose our N. I hate this game. We got one left. Okay. Can we top deck it? That'd be great. That'd be great. I mean, we're short three energies, so we, we only have like two left, so we gotta watch out for that. We'll probably grab Hex Maniac. Wait, did he only grab one card? He did. Huh, interesting. Well, I guess he has all items left. I just, I just load up energies. Even if, I mean, I don't think he has any field blowers left, so it's fine. I think we just go stick and absorb. Would have been nice if he was still burned, because then he would have been knocked out going into our next turn. Uh, but we can take him out here, and hey, two prizes I like seeing. The only thing holding me back from maybe winning is if he plays four handiworks, and we lose by that. But we're, he's item locked, so he maybe only plays two. We are going to see Magical Ribbon. He is going to end me. Okay, that's fine. I'm drawing more cards, so obviously he can deck me out with handiwork, which is kind of what I'm scared of. More energy. Okay, good. We got to see Magical Ribbon here, but we can Pollen Hazard him, and then hopefully we can win. If he had tap a Lele, he'd be in some trouble, because look at all the energy I got on me. Okay, so... Can we top deck that end we have? Hey, The 
the game likes us. That's our last end, though, so we gotta watch out. Um, but we are gonna end him here. And, uh, I don't know what he grabbed. He probably grabbed, like, flare gun stuff. It doesn't really matter at that point. But we will go with, like, Paul's and, Paul and Hazard. Sorry. For 20. And can you stay burned this time? Please. Stay burned. It never works for me. But stay burned, please. Yes, finally. Finally. It act I think that's the first time I've actually kept my opponent burned. And... Keep in mind, I've never really done burn that much, but that might be the first time. But my opponent might be in some trouble here. Just glad we're pooping on Sylveon. It feels good. It feels good to poop on these decks that, like, make you make you rage. It's not lab. I, I mean, you get to link with me again. It's fine. I'm just going to get rid of three cards I don't even need anymore. Still keep the energy, which is good, too. Now, can you get Tails? No! Sylveon, go die in a hole! It's fine, though. I think we can knock him out next turn anyways. He side labbed himself. Actually, no, wait, he got rid of it, right? He's gonna grab another Sylveon. This is... The fact that we're not really doing as much damage as we want is the big thing that's keeping us back. I guess we just stick and absorb. He clearly grabbed another Eevee and Sylveon. And let's see. Let's see what happens for my opponent here. If he was still burned, we... <laughs> oh, if only he stayed burned. Yeah, he grabbed Eevee. Of course he did. Can we win the game before we get decked out? That is the question. We have no way to really get any cards back right of ends. I don't know how many more handiworks he plays. Flare gun? Okay, that's fine. We still keep the DCE, which I can easily just hold on to anyways. And we still got a few left. Hey, Tails! That means we win the game! Yes! Go die in a whole Sylveon stall decks! So yeah, I said Sylveon stall, not Sylveon in general, because I like Sylveon. But, I like playing Sylveon with Decidueye. You know, uh, you know a, a unique way. But go... Dying a whole Sylveon. Easy wins. Not easy win, but that was a really good game, I think. We showed off Victory Bell Valcom pretty nicely. Thank the Lord. Um, we'll see you guys in another match. I actually gotta go eat dinner right now. I ate Evolution's pack. But I'll open that up after. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in another match with the deck in just a sec. Alright, guys, let's go hop into some matches here with the Victory Bell deck once again. And uh, we'll see. <laughs> that Sylveon game was so satisfying. I know it might have been a little salty, but, you know, it is Sylveon. It's one of those decks that is going to make you filthy. But we finally find a game here. And it looks like we're going to be up against a... Well, I, I can't really describe what the deck is. <laughs> There's a bunch of different types. The best I can guess is that it might be a Vespaquin deck. But uh, I guess we'll see. We'll go for Tails here on the coin flip. Toadow letting us down again. You know, Toadow, buddy. One day you're going to evolve into a Frogator, But uh, for now, you're just you're not putting much good work in with the coin flip heads. Dude, I, I don't get it, Toadow. What did I ever do to you? I guess I'm going to have to switch to Cyndaquil. Alright, well let's see here what we start with. Alright, it looks like we are going to get a bit of a mulligan. Not really revealing what we're truly playing. You know, my, we're just showing that we do play Vile Plume. You know, my opponent's probably like, alright, it's a Decidueye Plume deck. Um, but we're not actually playing Decidueye Plume. Um, so there's that. And alright, it looks like we are going to start with... Um, Bellsprout and Oddish. I think I'm going to... Yeah, okay, we're going to have to start with Bellsprout here. Quench Oddish. Hopefully, okay, if we can tap like a Force Giant Plant, this hand will be a lot better. Uh, so let's see if we can get it or not. Uh, top deck for Force, please. Oh, it looks like we are actually going to be up against Gallade Octillery. Alright. Okay. It looks like I was off there with what I was expecting it to be, but yeah, it does look like we are going to be playing against Gallade Octillery, which, I mean, it's not terrible. Um, Gallade does evolve, so they can easily use Rare Candy, or they can go to Curlia and get out of the whole lock that you're gonna do with uh, victory bell but um i think the fact that they only play four energies and uh the fact that we have vile plume it might actually slow them down for being able to actually pull off a lot of attacks uh depending on how quick we can get vile plume play because the item lock can really screw them over because they only play like four energies um they could be in some big trouble so we'll see how that goes uh we see a bridget from my opponent okay the opponent to get a dc down um, kind of scared of them attaching a DC to the active Tapu Lele, though, I'm not gonna lie. We just get another level ball. I guess we're gonna have to just grab a second Bellsprout. We're gonna have to play N here, unfortunately. Uh, can't really do anything about that. Let's just check the deck here, alright? So, it looks like one Vile Plume is prized. Um, but all of our Forester in the deck, which is good. Alright, so we'll grab another Bellsprout. I mean, we kind of have to. If I'm gonna put energy, I'm gonna have to put on a bench Bellsprout, because Tapu Lele can easily just put a DC on and then knock out my active. And, alright, look at that. We, uh... We whiff, uh, Weeping Bell, Victory Bell, and Gloom and Valkyrie. Alright, there you go. So, I guess we just have to attach and pass for now. Uh, we're, we're whiffing quite a bit with this deck, I'm finding. 
Maybe, maybe the Glissopod isn't really the greatest thing in the deck. Maybe the deck could honestly do uh, without Glissopod in it. Um, so we see a Choice Band going down. Alright, it's not really a big deal. We see Via Seeker. Is my opponent dead drawing? Because they've set a Via Seeker for a Bridget, which they can't even play. I think, guys, we might have them here unless... I mean, they could have Ultra Ball for Octillery. So I don't get that. But we do top deck an Ultra Ball, which is something good. Um, okay, so... I guess we'll put the Forest down. We'll Ultra Ball away Lysander, and we'll have to get rid of Galissapod. We still have our Vitalizer, and I guess we'll grab Weeping Bell? I mean, we could have went for Shaman too. Maybe I should have just grabbed Shaman instead. Maybe I regret that. Uh, we'll put down the Weeping Bell on the Bench Bell Sprout. I'm going to float stone the active, so if I do hit Victory Bell and Grass, we can attack this Tapu Lele, which I want to do, and we do. Now, we might be able to pull out the Vile Plume here, so we'll evolve into Victory Bell. We will put that Grass Energy on it. So I'll go Ultra Ball here. I've, I don't really care about Field Blower because Choice Man doesn't really affect us because it's not going to do any more damage. We'll grab Gloom. Now, when we do Shaman setup here, are we going to be able to pull off a Float Stone and a Vile Plume? Let's find out. Shaman, please give me the goodies. We've been whiffing quite a bit with this deck, so hopefully the Shaman can give us what we need. Nope. <laughs> oh my god. Well, we whiffed again, folks. We did not get the cards we needed. So we whiffed the Vile Plume. At least we can do Pollen Hazard. Um, I don't really know how much that matters because my opponent can easily just retreat or switch or play Floatstone. But, I mean, we gotta do what we gotta do. We had two Ultra Balls left and we whiffed the Vile Plume. A little annoying, I'm not gonna lie. Um, again, we have been whiffing quite a bit with this deck, so maybe you could add more like cards like Trader's Mail. Maybe like, I don't know, a Timer Ball would be pretty good in this deck too. Maybe you could throw in like a Timer Ball or something. My opponent will Ultra Ball and it looks like they are grabbing that Artillery, which, I mean, it's not a big deal. Um, they could obviously maybe get a galley. We'll see if they play any switching cards. The big thing that I am really scared of here, though, is my opponent knocking out my victory bell. Because we actually don't have another really good way to respond. I mean, they knock me out. We do have a revitalizer in our hand, so we'll be able to get the victory bell back into play. Um, so that's all fine and dandy. But again, like, you never know. I don't know if my opponent plays any switching cards. But, oh, a Hex Maniac. So my opponent plays Hex Maniac. It looks like they just Hex and pass. So it looks like they didn't really get much off that Abyssal hand. Which is good. I know Galilee plays like a lot of items like Puzzle of Time and stuff. So maybe they're just drawing into that. We top deck Victory Ball when we're about to discard Revitalizer. That's just great. Well, looks like we're going to have to discard Revitalizer from our hand. And a Victory Ball, which is kind of annoying. You know, now we're short one Victory Ball and we have no way to really get it back. Okay, we finally got the Vile Plume, which is good. Uh, we'll play Trainer's Mail. And okay, we get nothing. Alright, so we can put Vile Plume down. But at this point, we're kind of left with the question. Does my opponent have a galley now we are going to get a prize or two off this lele but the question is does my opponent have a knockout this turn if we get knocked out we're kind of going to be left with nothing uh maybe i should just maybe put the wind pot on the bench maybe that'll have to do that but we'll be left with nothing if he knocks us out which is pretty bad so we're going to be in a bit of a top deck mode here until we can top deck something but again my opponent is you know might not be drawn in anything here um so we see the abyssal hand we can knock out the curlia too with the stick and absorb so that's cool if my opponent gets the galley down and knocks us out, we're in trouble. No, it is a calm mind, which means we are going to be able to take a knockout on this Curlia, um, which is sweet. I'm just going to put a grass on uh, Bellsprout. I'm going to bench the Wimpod just in case we need to bring something up to stall time. And we will knock out this Curlia here. And uh, I mean, my opponent needs to find a galley. But again, I don't know if they can even do any more Abyssal Hands because they might just be drawing into a bunch of items that they don't want to play. Um, we've played quite a few items. Check in the discard there. We see a baby Coco coming down. But does it matter at this point? I don't know yet. My opponent just concedes the game. They saw the writing on the wall. They were like, well, I can't really do much when I'm not drawing into anything. And I'm also stuck drawing into items that I can't play. So that was a pretty nice show of the deck. We were able to show off how good Vile Plume can be, which is pretty sweet. Um, and we are going to be able to get some nice coins off the ladder here. 225 coins. Build the collection. At this point, I think I'm just going to save up for Burning Shadows. There's, I don't really see a point in buying that Plasma Freeze bundle anymore. Or any more Guardians Rising packs. Might as well just save up for when Burning Shadows comes out in a couple of weeks. So that'll be pretty hype. Can't wait for Burning Shadows. See what that set brings to the table. But we're going to get another game in here with our Victory Ball Vile Plume deck. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if we can get another nice little win in there. Maybe we can actually get like a longer game in. Hopefully we can. Obviously you want to show up the deck against a longer matchup. But we are going to get a game. And alright. I want to say it's not Volcanian. Because if it's Volcanian, usually the fire and the water... 
um, symbols are going to be beside each other in the pre-deck explanation. So it's definitely not a Volcanian deck. It looks like it is going to be Garbodor. That's my best guess. He even has a Psychic Coin. Um, Garb is kind of iffy. Um, I don't even know if we can actually beat it. We're not going to be able to one-shot Garbodor. We have to burn a lot of items to be able to get a lot of our stuff going. So it's not looking good. It looks like we do get a double Oddish start. I mean, our hand could be doable. I mean, we can top like a Bell Sparrow and get like Floatstone off this Trainer's Mail. And then I guess this hand has some value, but... Uh, if we don't get anything off this Trainer's Mail, I think we're going to be in a bad position. And it is indeed a Garb Odor deck. I was right. I told you it was going to be Garb. I told you, people. Uh, Garb, again, I think is pretty bad. I mean, you have to play a lot of items to get your stuff going. Plus, if my opponent plays Flareon, which they clearly do because they have Fire in their deck, they hit me for weakness. So, I don't even think I'm going to be able to win this game. I mean, Garb Odor is a deck that doesn't take any skill to play. So, of course, I'm not going to uh, my opponent will Ultra Ball away a Lysander and a Floatstone, and I guess they're going to get a Lele for Bridget, which is fine. I mean, again, I don't know how this game is going to end up going. It is a Garbodor deck, so it is kind of scary. Um, plus, not to mention, our hand is a little dead right now, um, so we'll see what happens here off this Lele. Will my opponent grab a Bridget, or will they grab a Draw Support? I'm assuming they'll grab a Bridget here um, to get more Pokemon on their bench. That would probably be their best play, because they probably have another Supporter in their hand. So, we'll see if they grab Bridge or not. At least they lost a Floatstone. Oh no, it's a Sycamore. Alright, so my opponent's going to Sycamore. It looks like they didn't have much else in their hand. So, they are going to do with Professor Sycamore here. Uh, Floatstone to Lele, and though there's a Sycamore. Alright, what do they discard off this Sycamore? Okay, Hexmaniac isn't too bad. Um, they'll probably go for Garbotoxin, since they see double Oddish. They're probably thinking it's going to be Decidueye Plume. So, they're probably going to try and go for Garbotoxin in the pass. Okay, let's see what we top deck. We get a Floatstone, alright, if we can get a level ball or something off this... Never mind. <laughs> it looks like we are going to be in a bit of a dead hand. I think we just attach the grass, or actually no, because we can still talk like Weeping Bell. Like, I was going to attach the grass, try to get some damage on Trubbish. Um, but again, we can easily just top the uh, Bell Sprout here, and then we can get a Victory Bell in play, which wouldn't be terrible. Unfortunately, though, we're in a bit of a dead hand. My opponent could be good, and then maybe they'll... Uh, be a good Samaritan and will end me. I mean, at the very least, Garbodor is only doing 20 damage to me, so as long as I don't put a Floatstone down, we should be okay to uh, survive a couple of turns, but uh, it's not looking too good. Especially if they, like, get a Drampa down or something, we could be in trouble there. But they might be playing Espeon, too, because they're playing Evolutions, so they're playing Espeon. So there's a Sycamore. Alright, they get rid of a Vaporeon, and, um, I mean, they could easily Garbotoxin me. So we see an Eevee going down, it looks like they're going for, uh, what's his face, Flareon, which still doesn't let the Garbodor one-shot me, which is kind of hilarious, but they are going to try and go for Flareon. I mean, it's not looking good at this point, folks, I mean, I don't really like Donald. Pokemon, please ban Garbodor, get this card out of the format. I don't know, I, I might do like a separate video where I talk about why I believe Garbodor should be banned, not because it's OP and we top the grass, so, I mean, I might as well just try and put damage on him so we can set him up for a knockout later, I guess, if it comes down to that. But, I think the reason why Garbodor should be banned, it's not because it's OP. People be like, oh, just play around the Garbodor. But it makes people so conscious about the amount of items they put in their deck. It's kind of ridiculous. Personally, I just feel like Garbodor is one of those cards that, like, it makes people play less items in their deck, which is really stupid. I feel like Garbodor is too, too, too powerful, but that's just another day. That's for another day. We see an average evolution into an Espeon. I mean, it's just getting worse. They can easily just probably at this point play like a Switch or something, go into Espeon, Psychic, Divide Me. They can Divide GX Me next turn and just win the game. So I don't even think we're going to be able to survive these next few turns unless we can top deck something out of this. We see Ultra Ball. Okay, they're getting rid of more Hex. I don't know. They played two Hex Maniac with uh, Garbotoxin. It's kind of weird. Um, and they're grabbing Garbotoxin. All right. I think at this point it might just be safe to concede. Um, even if we top deck Lele or Shaman, we can't even play them, so I think I'm just going to concede the game. We can't even use Vile Plume at this point, unless we found our Field Blower. I'm just going to move on. I don't think I was going to win that game, and then my opponent was setting up so much at that point, like, even if I was able to take a knock, if they'd be able to knock me out of turn. So we'll find another match, and we are going to be up against a Dark deck here. Probably Zoar and Drampa, which is still a bit of a tough matchup, because, uh, they can just stand in and easily get out of the Special Edition. They don't even need the Floatstone, as long as they have stand in, they're fine. Um, okay, we win a coin flip, so turn one Vile Plume would be really nice here. Um, but yeah, I think that Garb matchup was a bit of a lost cause. They they got set up really good. We weren't top deck anything. The fact that Garbotoxin kind of slowed us down even more. And hey, alright, it looks like we actually got a really good starting hand here. 
And yeah, it looks like it is going to be a Zorg Drampa deck with Dangerous Energy, of all things. Um, we do start with a, a good hand here. I mean, we're going to be able to turn one Victory Bell, which is good. Um, so hopefully we can follow up with a nice big old turn one Vile Plume and uh, put it into my opponent here. Um, so we'll press done and uh, we'll see how this goes. Uh, hopefully we can get the Vile Plume following the turn one Victory Bell. This is probably the best hand I've gotten with this deck so far to start with. So, okay, they're playing Dark I guess this is a Dark Box deck, um, but it's fine. We'll put down the Victory Bell and we'll play this Trainer's Middle. Hopefully we can get a Level Ball or an Ultra Ball or something. Okay, there's an Ultra Ball. So with this Ultra Ball, I think we will grab ourselves a Oddish, I guess? We could go Shaman 2 and try and drop it. But I think I'll grab Oddish here. Because the more Pokemon I put down, it looks like all our energy is in the deck. But the more Pokemon I put down, the better for Zork. But, I mean, you know what? Let's just grab Shaman. Screw it, I'm going to grab Shaman. You know what? Why not? We'll, we'll set up a bit. We'll, we'll try and draw a few extra cards here off of Shaman. And uh, we'll see what we can draw here. Okay, I kind of regret that now because we drew into really nothing. I think I'm just going to float the Shaman and Sycamore. We're, once again, we're going to lose that Galissapod. Galissapod did nothing this game. I think Galissapod can easily be removed from the deck. Uh, looks like we might be able to Vile Plume him here, depending on what this Trainer's Mail decides to give me. It looks like a Vile Plume is possible here, folks. So it looks like the Vile Plume is happening, depending on what mail gives me. Never mind. Uh, I guess I'll grab a Level Ball and grab another Bell Sprout then. That kind of sucks. The turn of Alton didn't happen, but at least this is the closest we've ever gotten to being able to pull it off. We were able to get, like, the gloom and stuff down, which is nice, you know. That was a pretty good first turn. We got Victory Bell in play. We almost got Valpo in play, so I'm not going to complain too much about that. Um, still kind of scared of Zorark, though, because once again, they can stand in and get out of the special condition, and then we're kind of stuck without doing anything. But I'm glad we finally got a good turn one. But yeah, guys, I personally think Galissapod isn't really that good in this deck. I thought it would be good, like, maybe, like, in the late game, if Victory Bell is putting in work, you can set up a Galissapod on the bench and maybe, like, have, like, a big attacker that can do big damage to your opponent. But I feel like Galissapod has been completely useless. I haven't used it once, so I think you can definitely remove the Wimpod and the Galissapod and maybe add in a few more, you know, draw support cards. Maybe if you can make room for, like, a 4-4 Victory Bell lineup. I think 4-4 Victory Bell is just the way to go. Um, if you want to go aggro Victory Ball, that's the perfect route. I just like the Galissapod, but I guess we didn't need it. But we whiff, we whiff the Vile Plume, folks. But I guess we'll just settle with a Pollen Hazard. It's fine. You know what? At this point, I think we're okay. We can at least put damage on him. I mean, my opponent can obviously go Zoark, Floatstone, and Pollen Hazard becomes completely useless. But it's all good. I feel okay right now. My opponent's even staying burned for once, which is good because I've never really been getting lucky with my burn flips. Um. My opponent will put a Dark Energy on the Dark Rye, and they're going to go for a Dark Pulse. They do actually hit it, so they're not going to take Confusion damage. They're going to put 60 damage on me, um, but if they stay burned here, we might actually we'll knock them out. Dang it. Dang it, dang it. Alright, we played a lot of items there, too, looking at my discard pile. Uh, we'll put a Grass on to Bellsprout, and I'm actually just going to settle with Sick and Absorb. The reason I'm not not um, adding him is because my opponent actually isn't drawing in anything, like, they're not playing any supporters, so there's really no point in them, but the good thing here, they're actually gonna get knocked out going into my next turn, meaning that we, well, I was gonna say we could win the game, because we could just knock out Zoro the following turn. We see the Dark Energy going down, we're gonna see an Umbreon hit the field, so my opponent is gonna get an Umbreon, Umbreon could be devastating if, um, we don't have an energy after they do, like, a Dark Call, but we should be okay, because we have another Bellsprout cooking up on the bench, so the Dark Ray will get knocked out, into our turn, and it looks like we are going to take a prize. There's an Ultra Ball, so we are going to be able to get a Vile Plume down, folks. Vile Plume will happen. Um, maybe it'd be better to go for a Weeping Ball, just to make sure I have another attacker here. Hey, okay, never mind. All right, my opponent just concedes. I was going to say we got an Ultra Ball to get more stuff. But I think that'll wrap up today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. I think we showed up the deck well. I'm just glad we got that Sylveon game in. But yeah, I think I'll wrap up the day's video, guys. I enjoyed the deck quite a bit. Yeah, it was a standard deck. But thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit like button. Don't forget to subscribe to more PCGO content. Help me on the road to 2,000 subs. And I'll see you guys on another PCGO video. Have a good day. Goodbye.